House of Mystery presents Inside Writing, the radio show where authors discuss their writing process in all genres. The House of Mystery, and I'm surrounded in, uh, with lightning and thunder, and, and I'm in the middle of a storm here. Nobody cares. Um, <laughs> and we've got... Mr. Dave Martino has been sitting in. He's our, our co-host. He's, he's, he's the regular co-host. In fact, you're going to be a co-host pretty soon. I am? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't tell you. I'm quitting. I'm leaving it. You're quitting? <laughs> I've, I've, had it. I've had it with these guests. I've had it with people. Uh, I need a break, you know, and, and you can deal with it. You do. Okay. It. Yeah, people like yeah, you better. Anyway. Sure. <laughs> you're the nice one. They like you. and they don't, they don't like me too. So. They do. Yeah, they complain about it. Why did you chain me up in the basement of the House of Mystery? <laughs> well, it's because just because they like you, it doesn't mean they want to be around you. Oh, that's true. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'll let you loose. I'll tell oh. you, <laughs> loose on the world would be worse than a virus. <laughs> Too soon, maybe. Well, um, so now today we are going into the, uh, I want to say wild, wild west. Not really, but kind of, I don't know. What is it? Um, we're going to find out. So we've got an author on the line, and she's in a remote desert island, not telling anybody where she is because everyone's after her. So, Anne Charles, <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you for having me uh, on this deserted island way out in the boonies. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty. Are you, are you hiding from what? The government? Everything, Police. everything, everybody, you know, everybody's back out again after uh, the virus. So now I have to go back into hiding. Yeah, you know, it's, it, they're still, they're still infected. <laughs> it's the zombie apocalypse, right? So yeah, yeah. back into hiding now. Well, yeah, you know, you can only take so much. So, yeah. <laughs> well, this is crazy. Now, I, you're one of those authors that um, when I, got all the information and I was looking and you, you must have what, 200 books out? <laughs> Getting there. I'm working on it. <laughs> what, what is that? Have you, have you been like in this avid wild writer your whole life type thing or is this something new? Uh, absolutely not. No, I didn't want to, this wasn't one of my, this is what I want to be when I grow up. I, I wasn't one of those authors that started writing at four. Uh, but once I got the machine rolling here, it just keeps coming out. And I think it's, I think with the newest one I just released at the end of June, uh, that puts me at 31, I believe, or 32 in about a decade. Wow. So it's been a busy yeah. decade, and I think I'm going to take some naps over the next decade now. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> you don't use it, you lose it. That's what I was told. You know. <laughs> but, 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 you know, cause, so what do you, uh, so if someone was to say, what kind of writer are you? Um, what do you write? Like, so you're out in the street and someone, and you said, oh, I'm a writer. And they go, well, what kind of writer are you? How would you describe yourself? I usually, depending if it's, you know, female or male, I'll change it around, age group too, because it really, there's different ages for what, like, which genre, you know, you, you kind of showcase. But in general, I would say, well, I write these mysteries mixed with supernatural, a lot of humor, touch of romance, action, adventure, the whole ball of wax. I put it all together, and that's what I write. And I usually tell them, you know, you're not going to read these books and decide I'm going to get rid of all my, you know, books in my house and go minimalist or I'm going to stop eating sugar. That's not me. I'm just writing to entertain you, to give you something to laugh about. Uh, a lot of my readers are, you know, my mom wasn't, she was in the hospital and I would read these books to her and we would laugh and we had such a great time. And, and so one of my goals has always been to write to entertain, to write to give you something to laugh about and lift you up, you know, when times are down or just lift you up in general, even when things are going great. Well, that sounds great. It's, you know, I do the same. I write true crime. <laughs> <laughs> That's lifting. It's very lifting, it, it, you know. 
And um. yeah, <laughs> by the way, Anne, your neighbor's a triple X murderer, but don't worry, it's all happy times. <laughs> yeah, no, things are good. Don't worry about all that stuff going on out in the world, right? You know. Right. Uh, yeah, but that's crazy. So, where did this come from for you then? If this isn't something you've been doing your whole whole life, you know, you weren't the kid writing all these stories and all that. So, what? What happened? <laughs> I, you know, I think I hit my head. Yeah. My mom, my mom often tells the story about driving a car way back before seatbelts, and they hit the brakes, and I fell onto the floor. So, maybe it's even that far back. It just took forever to come out. I, you know, I've always, I have enjoyed reading um, most of my life. I'm read a book a day. That kind of person. Leave me alone. I don't want to go outside, Dad. I want to read a book in my room. So I think, you know, it's it's been in there, but I didn't really, at one time I wanted to be an archaeologist, but then I read up on it and realized how much writing they do and decided, oh, that's way too much writing. So <laughs> well, now I'm an sense. author, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it just, it, it was in my 20s and I was reading several books and they didn't end the way I wanted them to end. And so it started with rewriting an ending or two to what I wanted. And it just, well, now I'm going to write a story. And it just grew from there. And I wasn't one of those instantly amazing authors who just started writing and I sounded, wow, incredible. This has been a long journey of practicing and working on the craft. And I still, every book, I try to find something to work on and study and improve with each book. Hmm. Well, that's important. I think that comes natural with a writer as well, unless you're one of those you know, literary kind of yeah. people, you know, yeah, we don't like them here. So <laughs> <laughs> they're too snobby. Um, well, this is that. So, but, okay, so that that's all good. But, you know, for me, um, putting out your first book, it takes a lot of courage at that time because what makes you think, someone would want to buy your book, you know, so when right. you go to a publisher or you go to someone and say, well, here's a book, you know what I mean? Like what, right. what it, it, that takes a lot of courage. Um, was there a catalyst for that or what, what, what gave you the, um, you know, the, the gusto to go do that? Well, there was, uh, and, and way back in the nineties, late nineties, and then into the early two thousands, when I was really writing, uh, and trying to pursue publishing on the side of my full time day job, which was technical writer, I had acquired an agent like you were supposed to. I was submitting to the big houses through my agent and trying to do the usual. You know, this was just at the start of indie or you know using amazon and right. and the whole thing the ebook revolution type of thing so i had an agent and we submitted um several of the early books and and kept making it a little further up the publishing you know ladder and nearly departed in deadwood which is the first in my deadwood mystery series uh that one actually landed, and I went clear up the publishing chain in one of the big houses to the final acquisitions. I'd worked with an editor. We'd gotten it just the way they wanted it, and I had the second one written and ready. And we made it to final acquisitions, and marketing came in and said, this book is set in the Midwest. We don't think there's a big enough audience, so no thanks. Uh, marketing loves you. Bye bye now. And so I was pretty, I was just, you know, if anyone that's done that, it takes months to get that far. A month of hope and how's this going to go? And you're so excited as you keep passing each, you know, rung, if you will, and get further up. And so I got that news. I received that news. And then I, we were heading down to Ashland in Oregon for the Shakespeare Festival. And I was driving that day and, then I got pulled over for speeding, yeah. and then I we got down there, and then I drank a whole <laughs> bottle of wine. <laughs> and when I woke up later the next day, I in, said, "In jail." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I had a friend that had decided to try her her hand at indie publishing, going going on her own, and we had you know gone so far, and the editors loved it, and. I tested lots of people, lots of readers, and they liked it, you know. So I, my agent and I said, well, let's just, let's form a publishing company and do it. 
and go forth because I knew being from the Midwest, there was an audience for this kind of book. I, I, you know, I, I often joke that when we're out farming on the tractor, we do take breaks to read, you know, it's, (laughs) it's not just, there's huge, you know, wonderful readers in the Midwest. So I did think there was an audience. And so that rejection from marketing really gave me a, 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 good goose to go forth and do it and ha- with a lot of anger involved right so right, right. make it happen mm-hmm. um and that was kind of what got it all going it was that initial burn and then i, I at the right about the same time as we were going live i won the daphne du Maurier and and then i won the golden heart which is um because of the romance element in the story which is a nash both two are national awards so it was really a kind of yeah this is going to work you can do this and so we went forth and that was back when amazon had the free ebooks you know and it was a big Mm. thing Mm. so we got a couple books out i i did a free run like 40 to fifty thousand books flew off into nowhere land and you think what have i done oh my (laughs) what have i done um but it just then they bought book two and three and four and it uh so many of my readers have been with me since the beginning it's crazy so and wonderful so that's kind of how it all it it wasn't a smooth you know i'm gonna do this and it's all gonna work it was more of a (laughs) i'm mad and i'm gonna jump off the cliff and we're gonna do this well that's good I mean, you know, uh, you, right. you have to believe in yourself and you have to you have to push forward. There's always good, there's a lot of rejection in this business. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of negativity, a lot of rejection. And um, you have to be able to deal with that. And I think Amazon is the is a way out. But people have also got to be careful with self-publishing because you still got to take it serious. You got to write write a, a good story and you got to make sure the spelling is correct and you got to have right <laughs> you know you got to right. go through the hoops because there's some people just kind of go out and it's like ooh, you know and it's too bad because they could have a really good book mm-hmm. if they had someone to proofread and edit for them i agree i, I when i talk to if new readers and workshops and, and whatnot there's two main things one is and let's see if I can remember the second after I get talking about the first one is <laughs> editing. Uh, I, I have a professional editor. She has edited professionally before this and now she does, you know, books as well. And I pay her, but I also have approximately with all the different levels of betas and first draft readers, I have nearly 60 people who go through the book before it goes live. Uh, And those aren't all my aunts and the nice people who go, oh, it looks good. It's a great story. It's not that. It's people tearing it, you know, looking Mm -hmm. for content, especially in a series like I have, which is an ongoing series. They'll know the backstories, and they'll see, oh, well, back in book eight, you said this, and now it's this. So down, you know, it's content. It's grammar. It's everything we're looking for. So it by the time it goes live, you know, it has to compete with a book coming out from any of the big publishers, you know, from the cover to everything inside. So that's big. And the other thing is marketing. We you cannot do well as an indie author unless you do marketing of some sort. You know, you have to figure out what's your strength, but you need to be out there promoting and marketing it as well. Yeah. Oh, and that's hard. That's a hard thing to do for a lot of writers. Yeah, the marketing, especially because, well, even me, you know, God, I work in radio, but I hate marketing. Ah, I know. I know. I, I, you know, people say you're so good. out. You know, you seem so at ease. And it's like, no, I really want to be at home in my pajamas, eating ice cream, watching TV. Yeah, You know, that's where I'm comfortable. But I know that this is what's needed to be done in order to, you know, shout out and get some people to try the books. Well, I'm playing hard to get. I still stay at home and eat ice cream. Okay. Well, I hope you're wearing pajamas at least. <laughs> well, usually, but not always. <laughs> it depends how hot it is, right? Right. But, well, you know, but the whole thing is, uh, for me too, um, you see, because I don't know if this is for you, but uh, going to book signings and meeting the public, that's still really a hard thing to get over because I'm not – myself it's kind of a bragging thing you know it's almost like you're sitting at a table in a in a barnes and nobles and people are coming up and they want you to sign the book i i still feel uncomfortable with that 
I I understand. I mean, when it comes down to it, we're just like everybody else. Is the way I feel. I have to clean the toilets and the yeah, shower. Right. I mean, I don't. Mm. It's, I, it's, I, I don't. I don't look at it. when you're signing it. It makes you feel like you know. It's not like I'm a rock star. I'm not like Motley Crue here or something. Right. This is like, <laughs> right. It just seems out of place. It doesn't seem in character. You know. But look, yeah, you are. You do create this wonderful. F- Wonderful story, fiction, nonfiction. And when I think of some of my favorite books, if I were to meet those authors, I would be all starry eyed because they tell, you know, the stories that I love. And as starry eyed as I would be meeting, you know, some of the big rock stars out there because I'm in their head. I love what they've created. And wow, you're so amazing. So, you know, I, I, I try to remember when I'm doing signings. Even though you know I may have just cleaned the toilet that morning, remember Hopefully that. You washed your hands. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, uh, just remembering that for somebody who read the stories and loved them, to try to be on the other side of that and and to be nice, to be friendly, to make that moment for them as great and and fun and cool as it can be. That's. And, and I didn't come up with that. I heard that from someone else who's done this uh, uh, all his life. Was yeah. I did. It was <laughs> give them 30 seconds that they can have as a, a wonderful memory. Because usually, you know, if you think of people you've met, it's just that little bit. And if they were fun and wonderful and treated you like you were actually there and not, you know, yeah. it, it makes a difference in people's oh, it, lives. It does. It does. And, and I agree with that. I just like, I just don't like the... That sort of, I, I just, it just doesn't feel very comfortable to me when someone says, sign a book for me, please. And I was like, mm, okay. I yeah. Just, you know, it's just like, why? You can sell it when I'm dead? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. You know, it's like, what about the people that um, don't like something you've written or don't like something the way you've written it or what you've written about and you kind of get a criticism and stuff does that sort of do you deal with that directly or especially with you see because not so much in book signings that isn't where it happens but online you know there's so much right. online stuff and social media and someone saying oh you, you don't know how to write you know or something right, right? It, it, where, do, where does where do you stand on that sort of place well, I've I've had it both in person and online and in reviews. And I don't I don't read reviews because not everybody's going to like anything, you know, what uh, you look at some of the big names, Stephen King, Nora Roberts, these wonderful mm-hmm. authors, and they've got very negative reviews too. So, we all get it. Uh so I try just to stay away from reviews totally. And when people email me, and I wince a lot of times when I open an email from a reader. <laughs> oh, no, what's this going to be? Yeah. And if it's really, really negative, I just don't even reply because there's nothing I can say. They just want to have their voice heard. And, you know, for whatever reason, I would never think to interview or to, to email you and say, I don't like your books. I would just go, huh, I don't like it, not buying yeah. the next one. But some people need to send an email. So I'll look at it. And um, a lot of times I just don't do anything with it. It goes away, you know. Um, I've had a face-to-face where I've done talks and stuff. And a long time ago I had a lady, she's a wonderful, sweet lady, come up and say, I really love your books, but why would you have to make that main character such a slut? And I was like, <laughs> wow, because she's not. I have been worse than that in my own life. Yeah. Come on. Like, you think she's a slut. Uh, <laughs> right. Come on. In our younger years, you know, yeah. we have some good times. But, yeah, no, I've had that where it's just like they, they smile and then they reach out and jab you. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> did that really happen? Um, and I just try to smile through it and say, well, it's not for everybody. You know, not everybody likes this kind of story and you're much whatnot. Nicer than, you're much nicer than me. I'm, I'm the one that said, oh, <laughs> don't, you know, I don't go to your job and tell you and, and slap the sailor's cock out of your mouth. So don't, well. you, know, <laughs> you know, it's just like, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like that when people do this. And that's sort of why they keep me, you know, they, they right. keep me out of public, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't mean I don't make a voodoo doll later and stab it with a bunch of pins or, yeah. you know, it's, I don't, I'm not impenetrable. It does still sting and it'll sting me for a while, which is, 
you know, I shy away from um, things that might bring that out. And not because I'm chicken or I'm not confrontational, but I've, as we've all seen, authors who will fight back, whether they do it gracefully or not. And it goes, it can go really south and yeah. be really ugly. So my policy is just um, turn the cheek and walk away. What's that old Kenny Rogers song? Jeez. Power to the county. <laughs> yeah. Turn your cheek and walk away till the yeah. end. <laughs> Pick the Just fine a, time to leave me, Lucy. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. There's just battles. Which battle do you pick? Yeah. And no, yeah, you're right. Careful. And yeah, and I've been, I've been, I've been doing that myself. I sort of ignore a lot of it for the most part now, and I have fun with it now. I, most of it slides off. I do make jokes, and I sort of have fun with people, because at the the end of the day, it doesn't matter. And only that, I think. You see, you can get sidetracked because if you get involved in one of these interactions, um, it sort of takes you off your game, right? When you're right. trying to write, it puts you in right. a different mind frame. So it's not a good thing. Well, do you you have heard or maybe experienced about Amazon's uh, allowing customers, readers, to make edits? Have you heard about that going on? No, no. no it's been going on for I know, I know from friends that have been stuck as part of the guinea pigs for the Amazon um, this whole thing. Uh, a lot of cursing and swearing. They decided to let readers um, know edits and send them in, and then you have to if they're if Amazon deems them big enough, you have to deal with it right away or they'll take your book down. Wow. And so it started out maybe with the idea of having people help find little spelling errors, but it's become where readers will actually send in, I think, the stuff like, well, I think the character should have said this instead of this. And wow. authors have to individually deal with every single one, which can take hours out of a day um, if you're in this whole the beta run they've done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, thanks a lot, Amazon. That makes it even <laughs> yeah. more fun to be an author, you know? Jeez, yeah. I'm staying away from that, you know? Yeah, I just I, keep my head low. I just got a notice from the Amazon, uh, the Arizona Department of Corrections. Uh-oh. An exclusion. <laughs> I know, and I'm thinking, what? It's an exclusion notice for the very first book I ever wrote. Um, they're taking it out of the prisoner library. Hmm. Wow. Well, because, because, and they give me four reasons, and one was because of the, the, the type of violence in the book and, and, uh, and the use of the word fellatio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So those guys aren't used to any violence or, or well, the other, right? You know, it's, it's just funny because that, that's been out for years, and I thought it's been in, it's in public libraries. It's everywhere. And the Arizona Department of Corrections decided it was too harsh for prisoners i think you need to write a fiction story about what happened at the prison where your book was circulating and why why it's come to this well there you go you see that's the creative process you know i i i'm not creative at all i'm just oh know. please that would be funny this is what happened when they read my book in prison uh -oh. yeah so bad that they're killing people oh boy i don't know it just it seems strange to me that they were worried about the word fellatio in in prison. In prison. Come on. It's like, oh, wow. It's just, it, everything's just weird. It's just weird world we live in. Yes. You know. So, uh, Deadwood, the series. Like, so maybe explain that. So, people, what, what is the Deadwood series? So, I have two right. different series. Um, uh, the Deadwood Mystery Series, which is contemporary. And then the Deadwood Undertaker series, which is the same world, same story world, only back in the 1870s when Deadwood first got rolling, the western, you know, the old frontier town with all the mining and craziness. And on that Deadwood Undertaker series, I actually co-write that with my husband, Sam Lucky. So we have that world building, and then it ties into this modern world because of the supernatural elements in both series. Um, so you have parent characters that maybe were alive back in the 1870s that are now ghosts in the modern, you know, story, plus other, other non-human um, characters that don't necessarily age like we do. So it's really fun because you can go back and forth and, and you know, see what happened way back when. And we actually didn't start writing the Undertaker, the Old West series, until about three years ago. So I had built about eight, nine stories. Nine stories, I think, of the contemporary one, and then we started adding the history in. 
But what they are is, again, a mix. There's mystery. There's supernatural. There's a lot of humor. Humor's in everything I write because that's just, I like to laugh when I write. And a um, little bit of romance, uh, action, adventure, that whole mix that I like to do. So, and it is set in Deadwood. If anyone's ever been to Deadwood, South Dakota, it's an old west town. They're historical. They have the old buildings, um, all kinds of tours, fun stuff to do, museums. So I actually used the real place because I spent much of my life there and created fiction and mixed it with nonfiction history, nonfiction buildings, but then added fiction into that. So every year we have a, a fan party. Next year will be our 10th where people come in from all over the place, um, the U.S., Canada, and we get together and do all kinds of fun tours or different things um, and, and just have a big fan party at the end, and they can see the setting come to life for them. What the research did you need to do for the, uh, you know, especially going back to the 1870s? Did you have a certain so, process for that? Or? So, my husband is an amazing researcher. I start out always, because it's not, <laughs> I have always loved the Old West, and I spent time growing up there off and on. My parents were divorced, so I spent part of my time in, in Deadwood, South Dakota. So I, I knew the museums well, but my husband is so good at researching and digging in, and he just, there's so many books, so many online things he's found, um, books from locals in that area. Uh, Jerry Bryant, he's no longer with us, but he was a big part of helping with the Deadwood HBO series, and he's written several books that we use uh, to, to try to find the real deal. And a lot of times it takes reading multiple books uh, because everybody, Wild Bill, for example, oh boy, everybody's written about Wild Bill. Mm. But trying to find the similarities so you know, okay, this is a legit thing here because everybody's talked about it, you know, and some stuff you're like, what? Never read that before about him. So he does a ton of research and then uh, we talk about it and he he'll do the first draft of that series. And then I come in after and do my part in the whole mix, uh, you know, to create that series. But for the current one, I have locals that I work with that know the area, know the history. So know the buildings. And I've been there a lot too. So we just work together to try to make it as real as we can while adding fiction, all, you know, in all over. So your husband's name is Sam Lucky, really? That is his writing name, yes. <laughs> no, but that's not his real name. No, and no. Charles is Sam Lucky. <laughs> it's like, come on. That's not, that couldn't be real. Come but on. can you believe Sam Lucky was out there available, that nobody's been Sam Lucky in this, this world? That's a great name. Well, it's it a great name, but, uh, you know, see, because it's only recently that I've caught on. This is terrible. I've been doing this for years. And, uh, and I interviewed someone named Blake Allwood. And, and I had no idea that that was a fake name. And then, then later offline, you know, he said, oh, yeah, that's not my name. It's not? Blake Aldred? And I do to realize because he was writing male, male romance. Right, right. So like, he's trying to <laughs> oh, get Aldred, you know, And I was like, oh, yeah. you know, and I'm so dumb. I'm just, it's just flying over my head. Not, not getting, you know, Jesus. Well, when I started out, okay, so I thought I might write some romances. And I had lots of romance friends, romance writing friends. And... Several had had issues with stalkers, crazy, Ooh. you know, scary stuff coming at them. So, and I had, when I was just getting going, um, getting the family started, I did not want to have real names out there because, you know, for one thing, I didn't, the horror stories I'd heard about being stalked. Oh. And then on top of it, uh, I was going to have kids and I wanted to protect, you know, identities as much as possible. So, from the start, um, I became Ann Charles, and it is there are elements of my name in that, but um, I, I I wanted to have a pseudonym that would work for me, would would help keep it small and you know easy names, and would protect my family. And so my my kids have been you know since the beginning, my fans have known my kids since babies, and they'd go by Chicken Noodle and Beaker. That's their names <laughs> to the world. So when we go to signings, if they're there, oh, hey, you're Chicken Noodle, aren't you? And my kid just goes, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so they take it well. But, you know, I think it's – I have lots of friends that write with their real real name, authors that do it with that, and others that use a pseudonym to kind of, you know, keep themselves separate from that. 
Yeah, I, I sort of use my real name because I want I want stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so all you stalkers out there, you know yeah. who to go to. He's oh, waiting. God, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on but down. <laughs> if he's eating ice cream, he may not have pajamas on. Just remember yeah. that when you're stalking. Yeah. Well, that's probably what they want, right? Uh, <laughs> little do they know, you know. Um, well, that's crazy. So, uh, so you're married to Sam Lucky, isn't that? Mm-hmm. So? Now, <laughs> how is that writing a book with someone that you're partnered with? Isn't that because I, I could imagine because it's already difficult enough to co-write with someone because you have to be on the same wavelength. You kind of have to have the same feeling toward a story. So, right. uh, but with someone you're partnered with and have kids with. It, isn't that dynamic sort of a little bit, um, it, it, yeah, isn't that a little, it, doesn't it make it more difficult to write? Well, we had, we had totally remodeled a house before this and had children for years. So we thought, well, if we can do those things without wanting to kill each other, then yeah. we probably can, you know, write a book. It's been different, though. It's a different pressure on a relationship and and at one point a reader came in with the question what do you do when you guys don't disagree or when you guys disagree on some part of a story and the the truth is we argue just like anybody else we you know we come to we argue and we both have our points and then whoever's makes the most sense after you cool down a little bit then you go with that so it is it is different and and i've said and i still Unless, unless you know, okay, Stephen King says you want to write a book with me, and of course, what do you want me to do? But otherwise, I have always said I, I won't write with anyone else, and he's the only one I would do this because of the, all the, um, what you go through, the, you know, the struggles and all that and having to agree. I think it could cause damage to a friendship. Mm. Uh, but since we're married, it's, you know, nobody can just leave. So you got to yeah. keep working together. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> after but, all uh, the fighting, they re- everybody realizes that you're right. <laughs> but at the same time, it's really wonderful to create something like this together uh, and go forth together and do this. It's it's really fun to have this new thing that we came together on and did this, and it it, it can be very wonderful too. So, you know, when you're writing this series, like, you know, of course you want to entertain and you're trying to tell a fun story and have lots of parts to it. You've got romance and mystery and you've got a little bit of, uh, you know, thriller, paranormal. You've got all this stuff going on. Um, But at the end of the book or as people are going through the series, is there something else you want people to get out of it? Well, I always include, especially... Well, you know, I have another series I write is called the Dig Site Series, and it's archaeology down in Me- Mexico. And I always do a ton of research because I want to teach you a little something, too. I can't help but the – I'm not a teacher. never did want to be a teacher. But for some reason, when I write these books, I try to include elements that will teach you things because I think, you know, I learned so much growing up reading books. So I, I hope you walk away – you know, chuckling or just kind of, oh, boy, you know, having a good time with it. But at the same time, go, you know, I need to look this up because it was in the book. And was that true? That's, you know, uh, in the newest book, Never Say Sever, I talk a lot about different breathing methods and and to help with stress and uh, with fun. I mean, I have fun with it. And there's all kinds of names for different types of breathing methods you can do. So, you know, some readers have written to me and say, is that for real? Have you ever done that? So I kind of like that, giving you something new to think about and then dig into it further. I'm also interested in um, you're, you're basically writing two series. And um, I'm just wondering, you know, I, I tend to like to write standalone novels, but they're not as lucrative <laughs> right, to right. do that. Do you find that uh, you would be interested in writing a standalone or is it, do you really just uh, love writing series? I love writing series. You know, I actually have, and uh, there are five ongoing series that I have currently. Uh, the two Deadwoods, one I work right with my husband. Then I have Jackrabbit Junction Mystery Series, Dig Site Mystery Series, and this is the crazy one, the AC Silly Circus Series. And those are novellas. That is a supernatural, shape-shifting, traveling, circus train murders. 
Yeah. So see, that's, that's when I'm really crazy. Um, (laughs) so I, I write, I write series because I I struggle to say goodbye to characters. It makes me sad. And if Mm. I write a series, they're real. They keep going on. Things keep going on. And my husband and I often joke about when we're old, we're going to think all these people are real when they aren't. (laughs) We'll be like, you remember what happened to so-and-so? Yeah, that was crazy. (laughs) So, uh, I uh, I tried writing the standalone in one of the circus, Silly Circus novellas, but then I got the rights back and I turned it into a series because it's fun for me. Uh, when I first wrote Nearly Departed in Deadwood way back when, and I sent it to my agent at the time, she said, this is wonderful. Do you have book two going? And I said, what do you mean book two? It was going to be a standalone. And she's like, oh, no, this is a series. This has got has so much that can make a wonderful series. And I said, huh, you think so? Well, let's try a second one. And now, you know, 12 books later and ongoing, I, she was right. <laughs> it's, it's a series. So I think that I probably could, but then I'd be really sad at the end mm. uh, because they ended. And so I don't necessarily write series just to make money. You know, on this, this oh, thing, I, I write them because I can't say goodbye very well. I'm bad at goodbyes. So, so are you like, you know, you guys having threesomes with your characters? Like what? <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's, the, what's the? So, explain characters to me, like as in, I, I always find this fascinating because some there's so many different writers we talk to that are fiction writers that talk about their characters like they're the family. They're their, they're their kids or whatever, and they have these real relationships with these people that are not real. So th- that's fascinating to a person that writes all nonfiction. I'm mm-hmm. kind of going, wow, how does that happen? Um, so who, where do your characters come from for you? Like, what, why are they so personal? That's a really good question. I, I joke often about having multiple personalities, and maybe it's not a joke. Maybe it's real. Uh, because, you know, with each of the different series, I do have the main characters that they really do become, you know, we'll be sitting at the breakfast table, for example, the table for breakfast, and, and talking about something within one of the books and my husband has been with me you know since the beginning so he knows all the characters as well as i do uh and my kids will come out and say they'll listen for a bit as they're making toast or or whatnot and then they'll go is this a real person or is this one of your characters (laughs) and uh oh that's a character okay never mind you know and they because they're concerned initially is this someone we know you know uh i i don't know where these characters come from. And I have a story world um, keeper. She helps me keep track of all the different series, the different plot lines, the different characters, details about them. And and that's really important if you write a series. You don't want to mess up eye color, vehicle color, you know, things like that, because your readers are in that world and living it, and that pulls them out. And they'll let you know you, you screwed this up. So... I have over 500 characters now that I've created um, that, you know, when I switch, depending on the series, I have to refresh myself with all the different characters and all the different things that's going on and all the different plots from before. So it's it's really, um, between each book, it's always a, a prepping for the next series that I'm going to work on for about a month to get ready for everything. So I don't, but in the long story, the answer is I don't know where they come from. They just pop out, and they're maybe mixed with some people in my real life that, you know, I've met, and and just funny people I've dreamed up, I guess. Well, speaking of characters, uh, do you have an inner monologue? Do you, do you hear your characters? I know I hear voices. That's why he's chained in the basement. That's right. But I'm chained in the basement of the <laughs> House of Mystery. Yeah. But, you know, do you have an inner monologue, or, or do you, do you um, is it more images and symbols that you're kind of transcribing onto the page, or how does that work for you? When I'm in scene, when I'm writing the story, uh, and it's quiet, and I can sink into the scene. Anyone who's written knows you got to sink into it. It doesn't happen usually mm. instantly. But once I'm in there, 
it's just they're real the people are in there and and it's like you're watching a movie inside your head and i often joke that i'm listening through the keyhole and then telling the readers what i see and hear you know are looking through the keyhole and listening mm. but i let them know what's happening in that world and it sometimes feels like that now in the deadwood mystery series the contemporary that's first person so it's I did this and I did that, right? So I actually kind of have to sink into the character a little bit more. But yet, how would this character react? How would she react to something like this happening? And sometimes it's very similar to how I would react. And other times it's, you know, something a little bit different because that's her character. So I, you know, it's it's really interesting how that all works, how that inner dialogue goes. But I will tell you, they're all in audio. So I can listen to them as well when I'm in between books. And I'll be walking around my neighborhood, you know, taking my walk and listening. And I'll say the line that's about to happen. And I'll laugh. And then it'll sit, happen. And I'll be like, oh, I knew what was coming next. And then I think, well, of course you did, you idiot. You wrote it. <laughs> but it's, it's just like, I, I don't think, I think just some writers, uh, most writers are able to, create this world in their head and play in it. And it's a wonderful thing. It sounds like insanity, but and then it's insanity <laughs> yes. too. But shh, don't, don't tell them that. Cause then they'll put us in little rooms, but yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. Well, you know, um, paranormal, you, you seem to uh, touch off on that a lot. Shapeshifters, paranormal, um, all of that sort of um, side of the world. Um, is that from relative, is from experience that you actually went through or is it just interest or where does that come from? Well, the first, one of the first series that I was shopping was the, uh, Jackrabbit Junction mystery series, which is down in Southeast Arizona at an RV park and in the surrounding area. And that actually doesn't have supernatural in it because I wasn't going to, I was just going to write mysteries but then I, that one we were having trouble selling. And so I started writing the Deadwood Mystery Series. And in Deadwood, South Dakota, anyone who's been there knows that everything's haunted there. They talk about every hotel is haunted. All these old things are haunted. So I knew when I wrote that, I wanted to add that element of ghosts. Uh, she's a realtor, goes around selling houses. There's haunted houses, haunted buildings. It would just add fun to the story. Uh, but she's a dud. She doesn't see the ghosts. So everybody around her, oh, yes, there's ghosts here, you know, the mediums and stuff. So I thought that could be really fun. And that's kind of how it all began, and it built from that. Uh, when you have mysteries, that's great. But when you add another genre in there, like supernatural or paranormal, then you can – it just makes the world bigger because of the potential other characters that can do crimes, you know, and have, have things happen. So – it just kind of built naturally. I didn't start out thinking. I actually long ago started out just thinking I was going to write some romance books. But then it's it just kept building into now what I have. Um, I wasn't very good at emoting enough for romance. I'm amazed at how romance writers can do that for pages. So I always joke about, you know, you add a dead body and then I can suddenly tell a story about it. But mm, what does that just, say? I don't know. Like, shh, don't tell everybody that. <laughs> there you go. Um, we're, we're not even going to go there. But um, <laughs> now, when you say you, a lot of times you said you, it's it's entertainment, and you want people to have uh, a laugh, a chuckle. It's humor is very important to you, right? Through right. your stories. So, with that being said, I know that it is. For us in the show, we do that a lot. Even, you know, sometimes we deal with pretty serious subjects as well. But we like to have humor. Um, now, the world's sort of been changing on that sort of uh, behavior, we'll say. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of that counseling and people getting really upset and, and being offended and stuff. Does that, does that play into, like, when you're writing now, are you try, do you consciously become more... Um, careful of, of how you're going to be joking somewhat i've always i learned long ago in a workshop about humor that the best humor is when you make the character makes fun of themselves so it's not um directed at anybody necessarily you know you're not making fun of people because of a 
handicap they have or anything like that. It's all, I fell down the stairs because I'm an idiot and I, tr- I didn't tie my shoes this morning. Which, you know, the humor then is, is turned back on the character themselves. And that is something that I think people accept much. It's, it's, you're not going to touch on any, you know, anything, you don't want to go to that topic, you know, mm-hmm. because it's all self aimed back at yourself. Or if there's a very quirky character and you're dealing, the main character's dealing with them or interacting then it's the main character's internal a- reactions to the quirkiness, which doesn't mean they're actually insulting the other character. It's just when he says that, it makes me think this type of thing, and that's where the humor comes from. So a lot of my humor is directed that way rather than out. But I am careful because, yes, I have in the past, I've, I've said this or that in the wording and I've gotten emails. And so it makes you go, okay, can't joke about that. If I don't want to make half, you know, this chunk of the population mad. So let's pull it back. I've noticed with a lot of comedians I watched on TV, they talk about this a lot now and they're really pushing against it too. going, Hey, we are comedians. This is what we do. You know, let us do our thing. So I, I think a lot of it is I, 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 personally look at it as you kind of got to own it you know, right if this is who you are and, and kind of like what you said i i you know i make fun of myself completely all the time all day all night and <laughs> and it takes it down a notch and, and and plus anything i do say it's just who i am i'm not, right i'm not really different offline as i am on air so um i don't know we'll see i've made it 59 years <laughs> so we'll see how long you go i have done Cancel. promotion i've done things like i i got drinking one night and i i that sounds really bad as a starter but <laughs> and i and i created some magnets because i do a lot of times for fans different magnets for different books and stuff like that and then i'll autograph them and i made these magnets that when i was drinking it looked great and i ordered a, like 200 of them and then the next morning I looked at him and there was a very obvious grammar mistake. It was like, oh, man. So then I went online and told everybody I got drunk. Don't make magnets, you know, for promotion when you're drinking. And what am I going to do with 200 magnets? And we called them the drunken magnets. And I, everybody wanted them. So you could ma- email me your, your info and I'd mail them to you. And I went through them in a jiffy because they love that I screw up. And I think, like you said, if you own it, you know, then it's like, you're like everybody else. We all screw up. Just own it and say, yep, that was me. You yeah. Know, I was no. the bonehead. Yeah. And, and, and you look at, you know, I looked at um, radio people like Howard Stern and I think, well, geez, you know, um, he, he is who he is. He owns it. Like you, you know what to expect. Right. And so he doesn't get attacked like someone that wouldn't do something normally. And then they do it all of a sudden. Right. You know what I mean? There's a difference because um, I think it's just about your who you are in, in general, the overall picture. I think that's how we. Well, that's and that's his brand. He's I mean, I would expect something like that. If it was all nice and teddy bears and, you know, big hugs from Star- Howard Stern, I'd think, what the heck is wrong? Yeah. You know, what did he, he do? What's yeah. going on there? Although I've heard in real life he's really nice. Um, it's just the show he puts on. So I don't know. Well, yeah, I think they're just characters. I think he's created characters, and that's the most intelligent thing about the whole thing, is people buy into the characters, and then they revolve around them. And that's kind of the... That was the creative part of it that a lot of people didn't get, I think, personally. Right. I think right. that's sort of, you create a show, you create a character, and it's something that had never really been done in radio. So, you know, hey, um, I think that's great. I think he did a good thing. So, but, you know, how that goes. Well, that was long ago when I, when I was getting into studying marketing, because I started early on before I was published, really digging into marketing, because I knew this was a huge part of this um, career. If you want to be successful, I'm going to have to know how to write ad copy, how to do all these things. And he was one I remember studying because uh, the brand he chose, you can choose to be like a Howard Stern or you can choose to be, you know, Julia Childs or, you know, what do you want to be all the time? Do you want to be warm and fuzzy? Do you want to be hardcore? Do you want to, you know, pick what you want to be and just then be that and, and stay true to that, whatever you're most comfortable with. Yeah, and I think that's the important part of it, staying true, you know, 
Right. Um, now, do you have um, a website or a place that you like people to come and find you? Stalkers to go? You know, <laughs> so are my like, stalkers. What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want to give up for information for people to find you? <laughs> the easiest is just my website, www.anncharles.com. And it's just A-N-N charles.com no e in there so yeah that's the easiest place to start because then i have all the different books the different series and and you can go you know out to amazon via links and whatnot and see but i'm also on facebook and i'm on instagram and see i can't even remember all of them (laughs) i'm out there (laughs) i'm all over she's around i'm around yeah i just sometimes i'm more active because i get a Oh, you better get on there and be more active. And then other times I'm hiding away from the world because it's, you need to recharge, you know, yeah. and yeah. get back to the business of writing and that's it. So, but I'm out there all over the place. But yeah, my website is, it has everything, the links and all the information. It has Tinder and all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So, uh, okay. No, of course, and we'll have that up on our website as well. And anybody listening and do one click and they'll find you and and send her all your hate mail send her all your love mail everything just, just <laughs> send, send it, it all send it all doesn't matter even if it's nothing to do with her you know i know say, <laughs> i get that too i get so many crazy things in about veterinarian hospital stuff and i think somewhere there's a vet named ann charles i swear yeah well yeah well there's actually a foot doctor with my name and oh he's, he's written books so i i do get cross uh things from him too as well um so if, if you need foot foot work just send me i'll let a, you know yeah, yeah. Oh God, yeah. hook okay. me up yeah i will yeah no problem, <laughs> you know um i i wonder you know w- with the pandemic and all of that and you know this last crazy few years we'll just say <laughs> yeah um I wonder if that sort of gets in the way when you're writing, and and does it get into your writing somehow? I mean, of course, you're not writing pandemic, and you're not writing about that, but when you're writing in itself, and you have stressful situations, upsetting things going on around you, you know, like the pandemic and right. and all this other stuff, do, do, does it affect your mood, and therefore maybe get into your writing? It does. I I was doing well, continuing with the humor and writing. Until this last uh, December, January, I kind of, I disappeared for a bit, and I was struggling to find the humor then. So I actually, I I focused on family, I kind of pulled away from writing more for a couple months and crossed my fingers it would all come back, And and it did in February, then I got to, I started back up, and I, it was still there, and I felt like, okay, I can do this, whew, I just needed to take a little break, but then I was finishing this, this latest book, uh, the 12th in the Deadwood series, and I had about four chapters to write, and my kids went back to school instead of being at home, and then one come home with a little cold, and I thought, oh, it's just a cold, you know, she's back amongst the others, well, it turned out it was COVID, and it was one of the variants because we'd already had COVID hit us twice in our household due to we have kids in school, you know, and just situations. So here it was again. And the first two times I'd done okay through it, it really hadn't knocked me down. But, of course, I'd just spent a month writing about 60,000 words, so I was pretty worn out. And it hit me, and it hit hard. And so then I had to try to finish the book to get it done in time for its release date while I was sick with COVID. Um, and that was, that was rough. I lost about a week of time, but then I was back in bed writing, you know, my laptop on me writing as I coughed just to try to get the book done. So it hit me emotionally for a little bit and then it knocked me down physically too. Um, but I beat it and kept going and got the book out, um, in spite of it. But what I did miss my release date, and to have it for the book signings I had planned, we had to put out what we called the COVID edition, which is <laughs> it's gone through a couple layers at edi- editing, but it hadn't gone through the final with the beta readers. So there's, you know, I told everybody, and, and they bought it up because it's it's a special edition, limited number, numbered, and I told you, I, I told them, it's got 20 to 30 errors in it, and I swear to God, if you email me about them, I'll delete you forever from my get you out of there because i know it has errors but then we put the official one out at the end of june so it it 
to the point where you have a COVID edition. The, the darn pandemic got me. Yeah, it's too bad, eh? But, uh, well, that's just it's what we have to deal with. So, you know. Yeah, uh, that's, you know? I mean, that's yeah. life. And I know a lot of people have written, included the whole pandemic into their stories. But I decided early on living it was bad enough. I was not going to put it in the books, too. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, it's just not. It's just, uh, yeah, it's not the right thing. But, you know, I mean, hey. There's something right. for everyone. So, right. Well, it's been a great conversation. We've really enjoyed having you on and stuff. We've learned a lot. My God. Well, we, you know, all the <laughs> multiple personalities she has I breakfast know. with in the morning and <laughs> all these names that her and Sam Lucky, you know, just, yeah. just like, her, you know, all that stuff. And don't drink while you make magnets. No, don't. <laughs> don't do promo and drink. It's never good. You think you're being so smart and witty, and then you sober up, and you're like, oh, boy. Yeah. That that's wasn't a, so good. That's important. It's, it's an important conversation here. You learn a lot here. It's good to have fun and learn, too, right? <laughs> and and exactly. if you see Anne walking down the road uh, with headphones on, don't, don't even approach her. If she's no. talking to herself and laughing and speaking out loud, it could be dangerous. You don't know who you're approaching. <laughs> you don't know which of these 300 people you're going to be talking to. I, I know. You never know what you're going to get when, when you <laughs> get me like that. It's dangerous. <laughs> so be very careful. Very and now careful. you promised you would keep all the, the craziness under wraps and went and turned me in. So you, oh, you no, that's right. To... We'll have it online you know, for, our, <laughs> yeah. for our payment subscribers. We'll give them special <laughs> details and pictures. And pictures. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Enhanced video. <laughs> We spent money on this. We take this yeah. serious. We, we're a big, big name organization here. We got NBC here, so we're spending oh. money on this. Okay. Oh no, I'm doomed now. <laughs> Although we'll spin it. Let's spin it. And we'll make it crazy good. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, it's got Matt Lauer in the basement too. So, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think happened to him? You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it's been a good interview, and we appreciate you being here. Our guest has been the uh, great writer of several books. And Charles. Well, thank you so much for having me. You guys have been great. Thanks, Anne. To find out more about our show, guests, or to listen to past shows from our archive, please go to www.houseofmysteryradio.com. <laughs> The end. By George, he's got it. It is the end. I'll see you. If you're lying to me, I'll be back. This is a production of Something Weird Media.